Um, hello, everybody. Um, this is Vineet Devaya, uh, CEO and founder of TeleportMe.com. And I'm welcoming you all again on our fifth um, live interview session. And um, it is a great honor for me today to, uh, to talk to Alvin, um, who is the chairman of HTC China. And uh, I've been kind of stalking Alvin for a while uh, when uh, you know, the whole VR revolution started when uh, there was this whole uh, kind of boom around VR and you know, Teleport me being one of the largest uh, social networks for 360, um, 360 content. Uh, this was something that we just had to do. Um, and so, uh, you know, our journey with, with HTC and Alvin started off with just me emailing, or I think tweeting out to Alvin and asking him for support and help. Um, and we ended up actually working on a project with HTC, uh, getting devices from them, uh, and really testing some early, uh, early releases of virtual tours in VR. And so I think in today's conversation, uh, you know, we're going to talk to Alvin about a lot of things. Um, including VR, virtual tours, 3D spaces, um, the kind of future of what he sees into immersive content. And um, without any further ado, uh, I shall invite uh, Alvin onto the stage. Hey Alvin, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm in my quarantine hotel. This is my 12th day of quarantine. So, uh, so far so good. I, I'll be free soon. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's, um, I, 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 I think I sent you a message on, um, on, uh, on Twitter when you said that you're quarantining for what, 14 days? Well, no, actually, I'm I'll be quarantining for seven weeks uh, over three different cities. But this is uh, my, the first part of my first city. So uh, the 14 days in one room. And then I have seven days that I cannot, uh, I can leave my room, but I can't go into any other buildings. Oh, so, right. yeah. And then when I go to uh, China in a couple of weeks, I'll have to do three weeks in a room and then one week uh, in my home, I cannot leave. So One week. Oh, wow. It's like a, yeah. it's like a massive process for you then. Yeah, they're very strict in, uh, in these countries to kind of uh, make sure everybody's safe. So I'm uh, supporting the process. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, so Alvin, uh, you know, again, thank you for joining us. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, most of the people that are probably watching this uh, live video uh, or interview, not video, uh, are in different Facebook groups uh, around the internet, uh, on YouTube. And um, what I would like to start off with really is kind of just talking about who Alvin is. You know, I, I've looked at your LinkedIn bio. I know you're a serial entrepreneur. You have done some, you have had some success in technology companies. Um, and how did you end up in VR? What excited you about VR uh, and the idea of uh, kind of spatial computation? If you may. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, I, I've actually been familiar and, and, and involved with VR since 1991. So oh. uh, 30, 30 years ago. So I, I studied with uh, Dr. Tom Furness. I don't know if you know him, but he's uh, the godfather of VR. Uh, he's been researching and developing for VR for 55 or 56 years, and but when he was back in the uh, the, the U.S. Uh, Air Force, so um, you know, so I, I was very fortunate to to be exposed at a very early stage in this development of this uh, of this industry of this technology, and uh, as soon as I saw it and, and touched it and played with the technology at the time, which was, you know, uh, not very advanced technology, but um, it really showed me the potential. It, 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 it opened my eyes to the potential of how this technology can be applied to all aspects of our lives and um, will someday become the primary interface for people to machines and for probably people to each other, uh, you know, especially given the, the current situation with all of the uh, the social distancing, um, you know, oh, yeah. it probably yeah. will, will become a, a uh, more and more important way for us to communicate to each other. So, um, so I actually did my, my senior research back in uh, in college uh, on this topic, and um, I think my, my prediction was within ten years, all the schools will be using this to educate the uh, the kids of the future. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm off by about twenty something years, but it, it will come. <laughs> I'm actually all off by uh, a long time, right? 
Um, so I think I think I think this is a this is a very interesting story. I did not know this that you've been working on this for a while. I mean, at least conceptually working on this for quite a while. Um, so I think my questions are going to be even more interesting because I just thought that maybe this is something that you just got into in maybe you know, 2015, 2014. So yeah. the question I think most people have is when is it going to come? What is the right time? You know, uh, obviously this is the, you know, the most difficult question to answer. Um, but given the fact that you have been kind of in the space, you have, you know, you're in the know-how, you've done a research thesis on this. Um, if you had to just ballpark timing, right? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, I, I think we're, we're, we're really at the, the precipice of something big happening. Right. And I know people say that every year, you know, this year or right. next year is the year of VR. Um, the, the reason I, I say that is because, you know, I, I can see the products that are coming down the pipeline. You know, I know and I've seen the roadmaps of a lot of our, our products, our partners' products. Uh, you know, I see what basic core technology is, is coming along so that we know where things are headed. Uh, and as you know, I am also um, president of the VRVCA, the um, yeah. Virtual Reality Venture Capital Alliance. So I, I see a lot of startups. I see uh, what they're working on. You know, some things could be five or ten years away, but but you know, you 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 get a sense of the timeline, right? Um, just like when you know, in the the, the late two thousands, when uh, the the smartphones really took off, there was some fundamental technology that had to be available. You had to have you know, cheap touch screens. You had to have, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, low low powered processors that were, you know, decent performance. You you needed to have good networks. You know, the three G had to come along. You know, those pieces, the things that are needed for VR to really take off are a lot of the same things, except to the next level, right? So instead of three G, you know, we're going to need five G. So and, and 5G just deployed last year. So you know there's a million base stations now in China. You know, so it's uh, yeah, although China is probably the only country right now that, that has not really slowed down deployment because of COVID. Everywhere else in the world has slowed down, but I, I think that's that's you know a, a inevitable that other other countries will fall. Right? You look at screens. You know the, uh, it used to be. You know, if you had 1K screen, it was pretty good. Now we're getting to 5K, 8K, 10K micro displays. You know, so all of those things are coming together, right? So for us to get to a level where you put this on and it's it's not, you know, at the Ready Player One level where you can't distinguish from reality, <laughs> but, but I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be something that you could use all day. Uh, and, and, you know, what I, what I think will be the, the moment when it really starts to have a significantly different trajectory is when the displays uh, get to a point where it as, it's as good as a decent uh, computer screen. So you can start working, right? Um, you know, it's fine right now, the screen is for playing games, for watching movies, but if you were going to, you know, just even type a Word document with regular, you know, 10 or 12 point font, you can't really do it. Right in today's devices, but that's that's going to change uh, very soon. And when that happens, uh, people will you know will be able to 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 have a, a display that's as big or as small or as many as they want to do their daily work. And then that same display that they have on their head can also be used to you know communicate with their friends in a virtual three D manner. Will be able to allow them to to do virtual travel to some place where they're not at to attend a conference to be able to, to play a game where you are so immersed that you can't tell and you forget you're, you're playing a game, right? I mean, when that happens, there's really no reason to have another device, right? And, and there's, uh, you know, these devices that, that are coming out will be able to connect to your, your Bluetooth headphones or your Bluetooth uh, keyboards so you still can do all the productivity. You can your your mouse. You know, of course, you'll have hand tracking. Of course, you'll you'll you know have uh, you know six off controls, six off support. So when you have that, uh, people's people's um, 
usage models will change, right? Right now, if you look at how often people use VR, you're talking about a few hours a week for the people that are relatively active to yeah. uh, you know, a few hours a month, maybe for some of the less active ones, right? right. Um, but when when we get to that point where it's the, 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 the quality of the visuals are good enough, the quality uh, of the, the connectivity is good enough. And of course, the form factors are going to get smaller. You see already there's devices out there that are getting you know, thinner, lighter. Uh, yeah. Yeah, more more balance. You know, I think the, the price points uh, will will continue to come down, right? That's yep. the other thing. You know, I mean, and and I, I think people harp too much about price, honestly. No, yeah, um, I, mean, I think I think yeah. price is you know, given how much people spend on like PS fives and sixes, I just I yeah, I'm not. I don't think that you know, price is such a big constraint. I think. Yeah. Not, yeah. It, it, exactly. I mean, I, I think it's not even about the, the PS5s and 4s. It's, it's really about what are you replacing, right? If, if this thing can be used to replace your car, because now you don't have to drive as much. If this can be used right. to replace a plane ticket, so you don't have to do that business travel. It's, it's, in fact, like yesterday I was having a call with uh, the, the several of the global heads of XR for, um, for uh, PwC. And, and I was asking them, you know, what what's... What's your timeline for, for, for justifying ROI for your customers? And why don't you guess, how, how long do you think they, they, they use to justify the spending for an XR device? Mm. PwC, knowing that this is PwC, I would say maybe 15 years. Well, uh, I mean, I think that that's what their accountants would say, but you know what, they're, 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 uh, they had three different heads of XR from the three different regions. Right. He said three to six, three to six months. What? We we wow. can pay for we pay for the devices we buy in three to six months, if, if not less. Right. So 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 they're saying we 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 plan on replacing our XR devices every year uh, for the clients that we work with. Awesome. So that that's that I think that is very very telling. Now of course you know this is this is for business users who are uh, who will have more ways to to create value from this technology but i think the fact that that even a you know, relatively conservative company like pwc i mean they're they've been around a long time and they work with very large enterprises and you know they're not talking three years five years or what you said 15 years right in terms of of, of uh, depreciating this asset they're, they're talking about depreciating it and and, and justifying a, a new one in three to six months, if not at most twelve months, wow. right? and so, so I, I think from that perspective, the cost is, is really not an issue uh, for people who really need it. Now, of course, there are people who would initially only use it for leisure, entertainment. You know, then they're they're, they're looking at price levels that are like what you're saying for an Xbox, you know, three four hundred bucks, or for a PlayStation, uh, where they're used to paying that. But I think what they what they don't realize is that this is not just a gaming device. Right. This is this is your computer, this is your TV, this is your your big screen on the wall TV. You know this this is uh, you know potentially uh, your 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 simulation arena that you have for your golf game or whatever, right? It's, right. it's like but all of the entertainment things that you do, and you put it together. Yeah, and in fact, if you look at it from another perspective. If you have a, a decent enough, uh, uh, um, if you have a decent enough device, where you live, and what type of a home you live in, may not matter as much. And, I, and I, I'm speaking from, from direct experience. I've been locked in a, a room for the last twelve days. I, I cannot even open the door unless they deliver food to me, right? But I actually don't feel that cramped, right? Because at any time I can put on a headset and I can go somewhere. I can I can be, you know, in in nature. I can be in a, a space world, you know, whatever. Right? I can be in a, a virtual conference with friends. That changes the equation of how we live our lives and right. what's really important. Right? Just like if you ask people, you know, how much would you pay? Uh, would 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 it take? Now, I think there's multiple people done the survey. How much how much would it take for me to pay you for you to give up your phone for a year? 
And people are, are saying, oh, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. You know, some people are saying, for $100,000, I'm not going to give up my phone. Right? So you think about it that, that way. But this is how much we depend on a, a device that is a you know, six screen, six inch screen. In another three years, five years, when you essentially have a device that's an all day you're device. You're saying it's five years. So that's what you're saying. So the answer to the question that I asked when is five years. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm just I, I think, I, yeah, no, no, I, I actually, I, I, I think within five years, it, it will, it will be a, a truly mass market product, right? Awesome. And so when I say I'm mass market, I'm, down down here, I'm looking at all the questions that are coming in. So just don't, don't think that I'm looking out. Um, so if, you know, people are, are already, I think there are like five questions already. <clears throat> we don't have to go through them right now because we can do them in the end. But I, sure, just sure. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll just follow your lead. You tell me what, right, what right, right. you want to talk about. I think you can also see. I don't know if you can see. Them. I, I, I can, but I'm, I'm trying to look at you and, and oh, give you okay, that okay. face contact, yeah. eye contact. But, but um, you know, if there's a topic you want to discuss, I'm, I'm happy to, to go yeah, off. I think, the, I think Michael, your, your you know, message. Michael saying hello. Um, you know, we have Mauricio Lopez who has a very uh, interesting question that we'll get to. Uh, Justin Abel has a massive question that I will take uh, five minutes to read. Um, <laughs> and I'll get to it. I'll get to it. So people, if you have any questions, comments uh, for Alvin, uh, definitely leave them. So the, the software tries to get as many comments as possible, but it, it sometimes doesn't really get all of it yeah. no um, worries it's just you you tell me what what you want to talk about i i will give you my you give uh, your perspective my, my perspective yes awesome. and, and oh and I, and I do want to give a disclaimer everything i'm saying is my personal perspective it is not a representation <laughs> of the views of htc or or of, of htc vibe so fair enough, just fair uh, enough. put that these, in there. these kind of disclaimers are only given by people who, whose voice really matters like you know i can say whatever i want and not, it's not going to change but I think, uh, yeah, we understand that these are your personal opinions and, you know, uh, we, 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 we really respect that. Um, so I think timing, obviously, is difficult to say, and I'm a big, big fan of VR and AR. Um, can you distinct, like, I know that Vive is right now fully focused on VR, right? And it wants to become, and I know Vive is, is the, and, and, you know, Stop me if I'm wrong, but why is a combination of HTC and Vive, right? Is that still still true, or? Um, so no, so so actually, HTC Vive is a uh, the the portion of the business of HTC that is focused on VR, right? Because we also have businesses that are focused on on telephones, on, on telecom, on on medical, and so forth. It's a massive company. Um, but but it it is it is not uh, there there's there is no ownership. A relation or equity relation with uh, Valve. Anyone? So. Okay. Oh, no, well, actually, ever. Uh, the, the, the Live is, is completely a HTC brand and okay. HTC phone subsidiary. So. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was a, it was a um, like combination of with Valve. Yeah. So, so, so we we worked with uh, Valve to co-develop the first uh, HTC uh, Vive HMD. But there, there was no equity relationship between. Got it. Things. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. So I, I, I remember you know emailing and bugging you back in 2016 where we wanted to build a virtual tour player uh, where you know I don't know how much of this do you remember but Teleport Me had is still the largest 360 uh, community in the world and so we wanted to let our community members. Uh, have this kind of a holodeck experience where they can see the 360s and kind of like teleport me. So teleporting them into different VR scenes and we try to really replicate that at, at, at some point of time. Uh, yeah. Where is the, where is the non-gaming ecosystem in VR? And, and I'm asking this question because I want to move into virtual tours and I want to move into kind of spatial measurement and so on and so forth, uh, which I think are very important topics for VR. Uh, where, where do you think the non-gaming applications are from a, uh, not a development perspective, because I think from a kind of usage perspective, uh, where do you think they stand? Yeah, so, so actually we, yeah, I think I think gaming back in the, the first year or two years of, uh, of 
kind of the, the, this new wave since kind of 2015, 16. The, the, the first year or two, I think the main focus was on gaming, right? And that's where most of the users were, that's where the growth was. Um, but if you look at the last couple of years, where the growth is coming from, what we're seeing is actually the non-gaming side. It's the, the okay. enterprise usage. It's the educational usage. It's the training usage. It's the medical uh, usage. You know, so it yeah. You know, so there's also like government and military uh, usage. You know, all these things that uh, we uh, I think that that does not get the focus. You know, does not get the exposure because they're not as fun and sexy as gaming. Right. But uh, in, in fact, in, in China, our since 2017, more than half of our revenues are coming from non gaming, non-consumer business. Uh, last year, I think about 75% of our customers were non-gaming, non-consumer customers. Okay. Now, I think for, for the rest of the world, huh? Did you say 70%? 70. 75. Yes, yeah, 70. 75. Oh, 75. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so, I mean, but that's, I think China is a little bit ahead of the, the rest of the world in that sense, because I, with, I think every technology that has ever really gotten to mass adoption had to first go through business adoption first, right? So be, because new, yeah, if, if you think about that, um, you know, let, let's say, you know, the, the cars, you know, people, the, the first cars, the first computers, the first phones were not something that a consumer just went and bought because they were hella expensive. They were usually big and clunky. They you know, took a lot of technology to maintain, blah, 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 right? There was no content, right? Those, those are the, the, the that's the, the path is, is that when business is adopted, because they find a business use that they can get ROI on, then that creates the scale, which then brings the prices down, which then, brings the, uh, the the user usage models and applications in, right? So I think that's that's what we're going to to find is that uh, we will go through a, a surge of business ownership before we have that true surge of consumer ownership. Okay. So you know that's, so that's, not, that's, that's an interesting thing because now I think it's a good segue into kind of virtual tours and you know, kind of real estate. I think real estate and VR kind mm -hmm. of have a very close uh, connection. What have you seen in terms of uh, usage of kind of virtual tours or architectural renderings, whatever it is, uh, in, in yeah. the VR space? Yeah, I think especially these days because people don't don't want other people walking in their homes, right? People yeah. don't uh, don't don't can't travel as much. So if you're doing, uh, let's say, you're, if you're purchasing international properties. Uh, it's it's pretty much impossible right now because you the travel is just stopped right for international travel for local travel people just don't want to get on planes anymore or trains so uh, and people don't want to have people walking around when they're at home so it's just there's a lot of issues that I think are preventing uh, that that will be benefited from from having that virtual tour that's out there and I know a lot of people are doing virtual tours more through like a, a 360 walkthrough on your PC. Yep. But it's so much more real, and you can take that same content that's already there, but deliver it in a in a more immersive way. So you really feel like, what would it be like if I was standing in this living room or on this deck, uh, and looking out and at the view, right? But you can kind of. I'm, yeah, just gonna, so, I'm just gonna ask you a lot of a lot of like technical stuff here because a lot of people that are gonna be are listening here. This is what they have come for. They've come for the the virtual tour three D space part. So, <laughs> okay, because you know, the thing is, what I realized, you know, we work in the 360 photography space, and I believe that in the photography section of, you know, the, the broad section, the 360 photographers or the 3D photographers are kind of the most, um, you know, the, uh, the tech focused people because they like, it's not just about shooting a camera, it's about, you know, looking at FOV and a lot of other things. And so, they, they, they kind of mix tech and photography to create a, a service. And yeah. everybody that I know of in, in virtual tours and 360 is a massive believer in VR. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's just it, it, the the amount of, uh, there it, there are very few people that I've met who are in this space that don't believe in the 
idea or the promise of VR, right? Mm -hmm. so, but what has happened is that obviously, you know, the adoption has not been like everybody kind of jumped. That means back in 2016, 2017, there were like what, a hundred startups doing real estate virtual tours in VR. And now nobody exists. I mean, very few of them exist. So while the promise exists, I think at that point, the experience didn't, was not there. There was a lot of nausea. There was a lot of uh, whether to go native, whether to create an app. Uh, creating an app was expensive. So there was a lot of like those blockages. So if somebody today, uh, you know, say I'm a service provider and I want to provide virtual tours f through HTC, uh, through, the, through the HTC ecosystem, what are the steps I need to take? And let's say I have, you know, 100 clients and I can probably sell uh, a VR upgrade uh, to maybe 20 of them. So how do I go about kind of going from, okay, I have the virtual tour of these hotels, high end that I can sell them on a VR upgrade. How do I go about it uh, in the in the HTC ecosystem? I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if I, if I understand the, the question fully. So you're, you're asking, how does a service provider get involved in using VR to sell properties? Or as a content developer, how do I distribute my content to, to customers that might want it? Or if I I'm a tool maker. Provider, right, so service provider, but the service provider has created the content for the customer. So I'm a virtual tour photographer and I mm -hmm. have a client that is say a five-star hotel, a Marriott or, or, or a Sheridan sure. or whatever it is. And I, they have hired me to create a virtual tour for them. And I've created it and it, it's beautiful and it, it works on the web, it works on mobile. And I, I want to sell them on the, on the idea of VR because they can use that for selling to corporates, right? Um, so how do I go about that? I, mean, I think I think that the, for for the content creator or service provider, what makes sense is you create content that can be played back uh, on a standalone, and then that standalone can be put into the sales office, preloaded with the materials and and, and you know all the the property information and, and videos or whatever, uh, which then their sales agent can be can use to to have that one-to-one -one contact. So it's really a, a way of supplementing the face-to-face the -face conversation. Uh, what I have seen is some people will actually preload it and send it to a customer. Um, and that way they don't have to you know, travel to the office. So, so that's you know, uh, for, for companies that want. In fact, I mean, if you look at um, this early, just a month ago, we worked with Balenciaga. Uh, I know they're not a real estate company, they're a fashion brand, but they did their fall fashion show uh, as a, a VR XR experience, they, they they hire somebody to build the whole thing, uh, pre pre recorded the whole show, made three D models of each of the of the pieces of clothing, allow people to walk around the, the the clothing, allow people to walk around these this kind of futuristic virtual venue, right? And they sent it uh, hundreds of them preloaded into our our devices, uh, and they put it into a gift box, and you know they 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 had personalized letter from the CEO to all of the influencers. Right. And so it, it made a huge wave, huge buzz in the industry, in, in the fashion industry, like Vogue and Cosmos and, and you know, whoever, all, all, all of the bizarre, they all had articles that talked about this, wow, innovative way of doing a fashion show, right? When you couldn't get all of these fashion writers to come to the show, they brought the show to them, right? And they did it in a very personal way where they customized every one of these boxes and you know, made it like very fashionable. <laughs> right, right. So, um, so, was this an app? So, um, it, yeah. So, so it, it was an app uh, that we essentially we preloaded, put it into kiosk mode, so you couldn't do anything else with it, except oh, you couldn't do anything else with the the, the device, the HTC device itself. Or just... Yeah. So you just, you just turn it on, and it goes right into kiosk mode. So, so oh. you you are forced to watch their their. Um, their fashion show. Now they actually let all these guys keep the devices. So all, all they had to do was flash the device and they could, you know, make it their own again. But at least, you know, when they first got it, it was completely, you know, hands hands off, it would work. They just plug it in or they, when, if it was charged, they just push the button and it's on and it loads right into this experience. And then it says, you know, welcome to this fashion show. Uh, you know, here's how you use, you know, kind of a quick briefing and then runs them through a, a 360 video of the entire show. And then, and then lets them walk through this virtual 3D space 
and then it introduces them to each one of the pieces of, of the you know, 50 different pieces of clothing on these virtual avatars they shot. You know, so so it, it, it really gave them all the things that they would have done when they went to the show, right? Being able to experience that, that group experience, being able to, to get that close contact with each, every piece of clothing, just like you would do with uh, you know, a property. So you can actually walk around the property uh, and 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 see that, uh, but it also you know allows you to maybe there's a, a, a the owner previous owner may give you a video tour or whatever, right? So it gives you that combination of, of a kind of a guided experience as well as a self led experience. Um, so I think that 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 could be something that uh, is a good use case that could be used in in your in your industry, right? And, and one more question I had was in terms of. 3D tours, you know, like a LiDAR is coming out um, and they can create 3D models. I think I think the, the thing that I'm struggling with still is to understand whether it is, I mean, I know the answer. I mean, I'm, I'm asking the question uh, for the community and so that you, you can give like, you know, the right answer, but as a technical guy, I know the <laughs> uh, but you know, I'm talking about, let's say I'm capturing, you know, using the LiDAR sensor on my iPad, I do the whole thing, I have the 360 tour, and I it already works on the browser. But do you, is the HTC device still, I mean, do they still support WebXR? Uh, you know, we have built products on WebXR before. Uh, do you still, do you recommend a browser experience or do you recommend an app experience? Um, I, I think a, a browser experience is, is you know an easy way to get into it, but you're always going to have a better performance and better usability with an app experience, more more flexibility. Right? Um, and we we actually also do have SDKs that will bring in these these uh, scanned images and allow you to 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 do that full full walkthrough. So actually, I, I just remembered a, a, a case study of the uh, kind of. Uh, hospitality uh, real estate market. Uh, I think Accenture uh, had worked with Marriott Hotels to do um, ball, uh, kind of ballroom rental. And they essentially created a, a 3D model of that ball, multiple ballrooms uh, for, for Marriott and um, allowed their customers, potential customers to go in there. And then they would say, oh, okay, well, you, know, I, you know, we can't go to that space right now, but here's how it would look. Here's where you would put your your, your different banners, here's how we would structure your tables, blah, blah, blah. And they said their their purchase rate, uh, booking rate went up about like 15 or 16 percent or something, something in that range. So it's oh, not, gosh. it's yeah, it's not, you know, is that case case case. Case. Yeah, I think they, they actually wrote a case study on it. So uh, look for um uh, I think Accenture and and Marriott. Think okay. or it might be Accenture and Hilton or something. I, it's, but I think it was an Accenture uh, real estate uh, case study. So, so they roll one up. I think, uh, yeah. Look, look it up. Uh, I can try to find it for you after. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I would love to like send it to our community. I mean, it's a massive community, and they would love to. Because I think yeah, uh, so so a lot of people want to do yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, so so I think they, they actually described it pretty fully what they did, um, but you know that's that's not a kind of the uh, residential real estate, but it's more of a commercial uh, rental real estate type market. But I think it's a very similar use case. Yeah, right, right. So uh, in terms of the future of VR, I mean, you know, we've talked about the past, we've talked about the present. Uh, where do you do you see any intersection with AR? Do you see, uh, you know, uh, headsets being uh, see-through? I, I don't know. Is see-through the right word? But you know, when you can. Yeah. So, so I mean, there, there, there's essentially two ways to to integrate uh, the real world with the virtual world. Right? You have the see-through model, or you have the pass-through model. Pass-through. Um, oh, yeah. So, so right now, um, pass-through will give you uh, more field of view uh, in terms of of the virtual portions of it. So you can be more immersed. Uh, but the quality of the pass-through video is still lacking, right? But the, the see-through ones give you a, a good view of the real world, but the virtual uh, component is it's relatively lacking. lacking. Yeah, so because you're you're looking at probably a, you know uh, the good devices are looking at about 50 degrees field of view for the virtual portion, uh, and you can only use it really indoors because once you go outdoor, the lights too bright and you won't be able to see the, the virtual overlays. So, so I think that the, the two technologies still has um, 
both still have some limitations with current day technology. But uh, you know, last year, I think in the first half of last year, we, we talked about a, a concept product called um, uh, Cosmos MR, where we put uh, super high definition cameras uh, on the Cosmos platform and uh, to bring in very high resolution of the real world. And then you can put that uh, virtual world on top of it. Right? So, so you kind of have the best of both it's worlds. A digital, it's a digital real world. It's not the yes. real world, it's the digital real world. Yes, so so it's kind of the, the you know, uh, HoloLens model, which is really about you see-through, but, you know, but it's see-through also with a, a dark glass. So you're kind of making the see-through part a little bit opaque as well, right? Or at least darker. Um, where in this case, you essentially have uh, kind of the full FOV for both. You know, so I think that that's, that's probably, um, because of the limitations currently of, of you know various waveguide technologies and kind of AR display technologies, that's probably going to give you the, the best experience near term. Now, longer term, there I know that you know some of our invested companies even uh, have you know 100 degree plus uh, AR type technologies. So at that point, um, I, I think uh, you know we we may be able to just do full see through and have kind of naked eye type of of, of real world experience. Um, but I almost feel like having having a high quality password will give you more will give you more flexibility in a device. Right? Because um, really the, the the use case of being of adding something virtual to the the, the, the place where you're at uh, is somewhat limited, right? Let's say or you're looking at a, a, a model of something you're building or you know, if you want to you know, play a desk a tabletop game, something like that. You know, but if you want to travel to, uh, you know, Mars, if you want to go underwater, if you want to go back in time, you don't really want to see the real world, right? So, so having having pass through gives you that flexibility where you can just block out the real world, and, but then you can bring it in when you want to. Whereas a, a see through model, kind of you know the Google Glass type of model, where you see everything and you have a little bit of virtual in there. Uh, that can that's I think that's useful for 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 certain let's say industrial applications where you know you're trying to fix something and you want to get some guidance while you're trying to fix it you know th those kind of uh, usage model if you're if you're a soldier and you want information about the battle situation you know while while you're seeing the real world because you don't want to get shot right so I think th 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 those use cases make sense to, to do see through but I think there's going to be a lot more situations where you want to you rather have fully virtual uh, uh, everything and then have the option to turn on the real world or the virtual world got it, got it. so uh, you know i i know that most of the applications that are built on it on the wireless right i'm sorry say again you, it, you use unity to build the uh the applications right uh, no, I mean our, our devices. It doesn't matter if you use Unity or if you use uh, Unreal or if you use some proprietary uh, engine. As long as it, it can render, uh, it's fine. I, I don't. We don't limit people in terms of what tool set uh, they use, right? And I, I think most most of the the uh, the good tools out there will, uh, you know, will support pretty much most of the major devices out there. So I, I don't think there's really any real concern over. Um, platform compatibility because of, of tool of tool set. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I, 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 I'm before you know we jump into the question. Then you know, people, if you have questions, uh, feel free to leave them so that uh, you know Alvin and me can get through it. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is uh, you know with Vive uh, and, and with VR and AR. There's this whole uh, you know. Uh, matrix uh thing which is people are afraid of you know like the examples you gave which was hey you know you can go here and you can go there and you can completely immerse yourself this means that there is this possibility of a matrix type situation right and and, mm -hmm. and i'm not going to name companies here but people are afraid of a certain company that could you know create that kind of environment right uh, so uh have, has HTC thought of that, or is, is HTC thinking of the larger implications, or is it still because you know HTC is a device manufacturer, right? 
it always has been even with uh, with the phones you know they, they stuck to android uh, do you think about these implications do you think about yeah of course so i mean i i think um the thing to realize with any technology is that um it's proportional the, the the amount of potential good and the amount of potential harm of a technology is proportional so if you feel like oh this thing can really be great because it can make you educate you so much more efficiently great that's positive but of course like you're saying you know it could be so so real that people are addicted to it and they won't leave the virtual world that's the negative so so i i think um it's really about we have to educate the public about how to use it. Just like you know, people are addicted to social networking. You know, right. uh, it's it's great that it can help you communicate uh, to a big audience very easily and cheaply, but it also can spread the wrong message. Right? So, so um, I think there, there's a certain level of, of public responsibility uh, to 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 understand what what's possible. Uh, but of course, you know, we, we think about this from a corporate responsibility perspective as well to make sure that, um, you know, we I, I don't think we're at the point where where people can distinguish real from virtual. yet. So we're still a little bit away from that the right. matrix situation. Now, I don't think anybody needs to, needs to take the, uh, the blue or the red pill yet. Um, <laughs> but but I, I think that that is coming. I mean, we will we will it's get coming. we will we will get there. Uh, and it is just a matter of time. But I don't, I don't even think you need to get there to have this problem because, you know, there, there are people who are uh, addicted to various to games who will spend, uh, you know, uh, 10 hours a day playing playing games. And, and the, today's, yeah. games are, today's games are on, on a 2D screen, you know, using a, a keyboard and a mouse or, or some kind of a controller, right? That's not that immersive, but people get addicted because the, the, the game designers design it in a way to appeal to to our kind of subliminal uh, hormonal systems. Right. And I think that that will happen with uh, with XR as well, and it, it will probably happen in a very in an even more extreme way. Right? Yes. I, I remember last year when uh, when uh, Half Life Alex came out. You know, I, I I had to work and I had to play, and I, I kept trying to find breaks that I can go in and, and, and play the next level. Right. And I mean, I, and there was points in time where I, I, I was in there and I, I forgot about the real world, right? And that's with today's technology. So, so I think absolutely that is that is a a, a, um, a potential concern. Um, but I think again, just like with any technology, uh, users need to learn uh, about how to manage themselves. Uh, if you look at what what was talked about in the, the first Ready Player One, they actually had uh, the device manufacturers put in safeguards where you could turn on a safeguard and say you have to you know exercise for so many hours a day before you can go back into the system. Right. Yeah. So those kind of things. So so maybe we 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 may look into that at some point where we put a kind of a parental guidance or parental guard. I don't. I think you know adults can probably do it themselves, but. Uh, you know, children may need to be managed. So just like right now, we, we have, uh, you know, on browsers, we can manage our children's browsers so they don't go to the wrong sites. Yep. Um, I think we, we may need some of these safeguards for, for these devices for parents to be able to manage their children uh, in terms of how much time they, they spend in there or what, where they go when they're in there. Okay, so, so no, no, no real plans. And the reason I say this is because I think that there is a great quote unquote marketing opportunity for HTC to come out and say we are the anti, you know, competition. Uh, because I think I think that is a massive concern. You know, I think that's what Apple is doing right now, which is if they are touting privacy as their biggest selling point. They're not very private, but that's what they, they sell. Sure, sure. So but I, I I think I think we're we're not there yet, right? I mean You're if you look there. at okay. you know if you look at ten years ago when when the you know, or actually 12 years ago when the iPhone came out, or we're actually 13 now, um, nobody was talking about the, the privacy concern because there weren't that many people using it. It wasn't that big of a deal. There wasn't collecting that much data or right. people didn't know how much data they were collecting. I think just the same right now, there's really no point for us to, to come out and really focus the topic on that right now because it's too early. 
Right. But if you look at what, what we do uh, compared to some of the other competitors in, in terms of, of what we do with data, absolutely. You know, we, we have a very different approach to that. We don't have a, 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 a database that we're feeding into an ad network. Right? We're, we're, we're not forcing you to use a certain social network to be able to turn on our devices. You know, so so this, this this is this is why I think businesses uh, gravitate to to our solutions because they don't need to worry about you know it might is my corporate sensitive data being sped through uh, you know somebody's server somewhere because uh, we're not going to take your data and we're not going to even store your data we're not even going to use your data right whereas that is the number one goal of potential other companies because that's their revenue model right. So I think that this is some. Actually, I do want to spend a little bit of time on this because I think this is the trade-off that every consumer, uh, whether consumer or business, need to consider is you know what what is your data worth to you? You know, it, 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 is it worth it for you to save a few hundred dollars, but then you lose your privacy, you know, or you lose the potential security of, of the things that you're working on? Um, so. So for some people, that the, the the equation is yes. You know, I don't have anything to to give up, so I'm 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 willing to to give up my information so that I can have uh, a device for you know three hundred bucks. Right? Right. But you know, if you look at what is a fair price for that product, is if you look at uh, what what does what does Facebook charge for their business version, it's somewhere close to a thousand dollars. So, so if you think about if you think about that, then, then what what is the the value of your data to them? It's about six hundred to seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Right. So, so, so that's that's because on on the business edition, they're they're really not trying to steal your, not, they're trying to capture, harvest your data. <laughs> so they don't they don't they have less opportunity to make the revenue on the other side. But that's that I think that's how they look at the equation. Is that, you know, in one way, I charge you three hundred bucks. But you give me everything I want to know about you, and I can reach mm -hmm. you in different ways. And then I will also lock you into my my content store, and where I can then capture additional revenues from you, right? Where you know we're we're really more about an open ecosystem, right? We're about any and you can use any store you want. You can you can silo it. You can you can link it to a PC. You can do whatever. Uh, we're not going to lock you in. And and pretty much everybody that applies to our store can get in. We, we're not judging you unless unless there's you know let's say you know pornography and so forth. We don't we don't approve. But other, outside of that, we're not judging you. We're not saying oh because we have a product that we're making like this, we're not going to publish your 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 version of some application. Right? So that's I think so. It's a it's a different philosophy. It's 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 kind of like the the Android versus Apple uh, debate of you know the last ten years. You know there will be a similar type of a trade-off that people need to make, you know, whether you want that kind of uh, flexibility uh, and and uh, freedom, or do you want something, you know, that is kind of uh, a little bit more integrated, vertically integrated, right? So, so for some, for some people, they, they will choose an easier model. Uh, yeah. But, you know, what we, what we find right now is that, you know, uh, Apple is probably, what, like 15% of uh, global shipments. So, but the, for the majority of people, they would rather have that flexibility to use whatever hardware they want, to use whatever store they want, to use, you know, to make any changes they want at whatever level, right? And of course, at the end of the day, uh, because of competition, the prices will come down, and and you will actually get a cheaper device uh, that is more powerful uh, and have more flexibility at the same time. Right? Awesome. Okay. So, so what I'm going to do, Alvin, is now I'm going to go and collect all the questions from all the other places as much as I can, uh, and I'll let you let, let you scroll through some of the questions that have come on the, on our little chat thing and and pick anything that you want to answer while I go and kind of get the other questions out. All right. Okay. Um, let me so know what... which one you want to you want to answer, and I'll just kind of bring it on the screen. I only see three things. I don't know. Maybe I'm not using this right. But is there is there more items on the right? I only have like up to Justin Abel. After that, I don't I don't see anything. Yet, yeah, I mean, is that is it? Do you want? Oh, I think it's because kind of it's kind of freezing for me. That's why. Um, it, do would you want to pick any of the ones that you can see? I mean, I think there are more comments right now. I'm seeing it versus uh, versus questions. 
I mean, I can see one about by Mauricio Lopez, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, I I can't read that one. So if you can read it for me, let me know because I I can't scroll down. Oh, you can't. Oh, that's right. okay. Okay. So all right. So I'm gonna bring it up on the screen. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, so the question about bring virtual, uh, real world objects into virtual world, absolutely. I mean, we, this is this is why we created the the Vive Tracker, right? Um, and I think if you're looking at pens, I know Logitech last year uh, uh, released a a uh, a tracked pen that you can use as a designer to be able to to do you know both two D as well as three D drawing in a very sensitive, accurate way. Um, mouse and keyboard can already be be uh, brought into and added to um, to VR uh, to VR, VR environments. So um, I don't think that that actually is a is a concern. I, I think in fact Logitech also made a, a virtual keyboard uh, that was um, tracked with a tracker. But uh, I know that there are there are products coming down the line. I can't say too much about who, but there are there are software products coming down the line that will use um, computer vision to be able to identify the, the keyboard and then bring that in so that you can uh, visually see the real keyboard uh, and then be able to be doing productivity uh, applications while you're in VR. So, so those are those are absolutely um, things that are on our radar. And I know that there are companies who, who are who already are making those available very soon, if not already already there. Awesome. Uh, so I'm going to pick a question from Nicholas Johansson. Uh, and Nicholas asks, is there a Quest competitor coming uh, this year? Any cool devs are entitled signed? <laughs> so I, I think you know we, we've said in the past that we will release uh, a, a new AIO this year. So I, I don't I don't think I don't think I would position it as a Quest competitor. I, I think it's our next generation standalone. We will have one this year. Uh, it is going to be a great product. Um, I can't give any specs on it. Um, but I think um, you will find that on, on, from, from every perspective, it is better than what we have today. And it's probably better than what's out there from any vendor uh, today. OK. Uh, Peter Larson asks, is there, will the consumer facing have some kind of eye tracking? Is it, I don't know. I don't um, know. So, so we, we, we have the, the Vibe Pro Eye, uh, which was released about, a, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. Uh, and that has built-in eye tracking. But there are already uh, accessories from uh, one of our Vivex companies, uh, Seven Immense, and that can plug in. So I think it's like $150. You can plug in the eye tracking socket uh, software hardware uh, onto pretty much all of our devices. Uh, I think they even made it compatible with some of the, um, uh, the other vendors in the market as well. So um, that the technology, uh, seven invention, seven, the number seven, and then I V E N S U N. So so you can go online and buy their buy their uh, accessory, and it, it works on it works on, uh, on most platforms actually. I think they they've got it to work on most of the platforms already. Okay. All right. So. Uh... Uh, Hakim Azrur asks, is there a partner program that could facilitate hardware acquisitions for orders of about 10,000 units? Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we I think we have direct enterprise account managers uh, in various regions. So so if uh, if you have an order for 10,000, shoot me a note. I'll put you in touch. I'll put you in touch with, uh, with the right regional folks. So. so the answer is yes. I will send you an email, or, or just find me on on uh, on uh, on uh, Twitter or something, you know, or, yeah, or, or LinkedIn, okay. whatever. So, um, all right. Then uh, we have uh, Pancake underscore Gamer, who asks, "What are the biggest problems for VR hardware today?" The if biggest, let's like say the top two, because there are a ton, but let's say top two uh, hardware problems. I think um, for for a, a standalone, it's um, 
it's it's always a, a trade-off of um, you know kind of capability, price, and ergonomics, right? So it's, it's right now trying to 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 get them all to be high is very difficult. So um, I actually am, am pretty happy with the new devices that are coming out. I, I think I think it, it it's it hits at the, the a lot of the right points that we're we're looking at. I think uh, the prices could go could could be better, uh, but that's a matter of time. I think in, in any technology sector, uh, early versions of of products will always you know be a little higher, and then as the volume goes up, uh, the prices come down naturally. Right? So, so I, I'm, I'm actually, you know, just like I said before, I think people overemphasize on the, on the price. Um, for me, I actually think that the, 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 the biggest challenge I see is getting all the things that we want to get into a small package, but still deliver the experience that we want. Um, so I think that that's something that that um, I would like the team to spend more time on because I think that will will really take this class of devices to that all day wear that I think it will head to in the near future. All right. Um, okay. So we have uh, another question by Justin, who says, uh, "Let me get this thing here." Location-based VR hardware. We are in desperate need for wireless, free roam HMDs that are not locked into a Facebook account, which is what I said. Everybody wants a device that's not yeah. locked into a Facebook account. So, well, so, so, like I said, I, it, it is coming. So, uh, you know, keep, uh, keep. Yeah, I mean that. That's what I you know mentioned. We we will deliver a product this year. I can't give you any details on it, but. Um, but it you know it is definitely not locked to a Facebook account. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so what, one thing before we go to Mike's question, which I think is a really good question, uh, wh why do you think that China is ahead than the rest of the world when it comes to VR? Um, I think that China is a ultra competitive market. Right. right. There be, be, because. Kind of, it's like almost like an anything goes market. So, so everybody competes with every advantage they can get. You know, there. You know, when when the, when Groupon came out, there was four thousand Groupon calls, right? When the delivery, uh, you know, when a bike, uh, a bicycle sharing came out, there was like a hundred bicycle sharing companies. You know, and ten of them got a hundred million dollars in, in in funding. Right? So, you know, when when the del food delivery came out, there was like 50 food delivery companies and they were all you know, very well funded. So everybody's always trying to get that edge. You know, when, when I have to compete with one guy, I kind of just move at my pace and I'll be fine. But when I have to compete with 3,999 other people doing the same thing, I'm gonna be working 24 hours a day to figure out how can I survive? Because if I don't do something better than these other 3,000 companies, I'm dead. Right, that makes people more focused in terms of finding that advantage, and I think this is why the the businesses um, are, are are really gravitating to to working more with this technology because they feel like, hey, it's it's providing me an advantage that my competitors don't have. Right, so so I think that's something, and and I think in general, um, the population there are are are. Pretty tech savvy, right? I mean, because everybody's on mobile all the time. Everybody, nobody uses cash anymore or even credit cards, yeah. right? And and you go everywhere by essentially the the DD, which is like the Uber there, and so so they're living kind of the the, the future world of of the the West about maybe by about three or five years, right? I mean, it's been a cash free society for the last four or five years. You know, and I and you know, e-commerce was thirty to forty percent of total commerce. Um, you know, for the last several years, and the U.S. was at ten or fifteen percent until last year, when it jumped from like ten or fifteen to like thirty percent in one year because of COVID, right? Wow. But yeah, so I think that's that's the thing is, you know, I, I can get twenty four hours within thirty minute delivery from any restaurant I want in China. For free, for free, for free, 
right? Wow. So, so this this is what I'm talking about. It, it's so when I when I, you know, I I get about half of my half of my dinners I just order on the way uh, home from uh, from uh, from work, and I'm in the foods there before I get there. Wow. Right. So and I didn't have to pay for it. Right. And so I think that you know that life that people have been living, they've been doing that for a while. So it's it seems like it's it's just they they adopt new technology faster, right? And and they they feel like that's how I'm going to to um, get an edge in the market. So so you know we'll we'll see the same thing. You know just like you know people were were still using text message here when they were you know WeChat was the hot thing and these super apps where I could do my payments, I can I can order a taxi, I can buy financial instruments, I can you know. Uh, rent a hotel all from the same app. This is like five, six years ago. Yeah. You know, when 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 WhatsApp was just doing, I can do text. All right. Okay. One second. Sorry, I'm I'm just trying to like make sure I get get to everything. So I think maybe this could be the last question before uh, we wrap it up. Uh, Michael asks. So. Michael, uh, by the way, is is one of the kind of the, the biggest voices in this space um, uh, in 360 photography. So, um, yes, so yeah, he has a good question. I, I'll read it out for everybody. Uh, he says, "I think one of the barriers of making VR more popular is the lack of understanding among non VR users. Would mixed reality videos make it easier for people to understand the benefits? And if so," Could you guys make it easier for users to make mixed reality videos? Um, yeah, I think I think mixed reality videos definitely. Well, and I want to I want to clarify when when because there's there's two definitions of when people say mixed reality. Some people mean oh, I can see a real person, you know, uh, being filmed and then composite that with the virtual scene. Right? Uh, there's also the other definition of mixed reality of being able to see through the real world with the with the virtual overlays. So those are those are two different things. One is making videos to be distributed. Right? One is really the usage, the app uh, from from the user's perspective. Uh, I think what uh, what Michael's asking about is really more making the videos, uh, which which I think is is useful uh, because uh, as he says, it's you know it's hard for people to understand uh, without trying the device. Um, so this gives them an intermediate uh, perspective. Uh, but honestly, it's it's not a replacement, right? It, it, you know, and and I think people can look at videos and be like, oh, that that looks really cool, but that kind of looks it's like a special effect. So I don't really get the sense of what it's like to be in it. So so at the end of the day, I think what will make what will convince people is when they actually put one on their head, and there is an application in there that they're interested. In, right? Right. Uh, I I have never I've I've demoed VR to hundreds if not thousands of people for their first time experience. And I have never had somebody come out and say, ah, that was just okay. Right. That's and, and what, here, yeah. 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 So so if you can get people to put on a headset, it will it, it will change minds. Right. So th this is why actually I actually don't think uh, there's anything wrong with what um, Oculus is doing with essentially subsidizing devices, making them affordable, because I think that is a way of getting the message out, right? And, and it's it's doing some level of heavy lifting of educating the public on the on the possibility of this technology, right? And then for, for their business model, it makes sense. For, for, for them as a company, as a part of a social network, what they what they do makes perfect sense. But it is, it is, you know, there's always people who will say, hey, but I don't want to give up that my my information, my privacy for uh, for the right to use that product. Right? So, so there will always be alternatives of, of uh, other solutions. And, and we feel like we're going to be an important uh, player in supplying that that alternative. OK, that makes sense. Yeah, I think I think I think, you know, the, it, it is. Uh, the good part is there are only two big players right now, you and, and the other one. And so uh, it, it's going to be a battle, I think. Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, I don't I don't think it needs to be a battle. I, I actually think um, both, well, that's both not companies... The tech, that's not the, how the tech ecosystem works. You know, There are no two big players in any massive market. You know, 
maybe in phones you can you can argue that you know you got Apple and you got the Android ecosystem, um, but in terms of you know uh, major share of like revenue generated and and, and kind of uh, cool stuff that goes all go kind of to towards Apple. So I think I definitely think that there is uh, there is that. From a well, consumer's perspective, I'm sure, sure. from a, from a but, uh, but, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, but I think that the, the customers will gravitate towards one or the other solution, yes. right? It, 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 and and it's it's self-selecting, so I, I don't I don't think it's a matter of you know we're going to steal away the Facebook user who is a diehard Facebook user who don't care about their data and and who just wants the cheapest product. They're going to buy their product. And I don't think they're going to be able to go to a Fortune 500 company and, or government and say, hey, we're going to sell you this, this uh, product. And uh, by the way, we need you to sign on to our Facebook account. Right? So it, we're, we're really targeting uh, different kind of users, different kind of uh, requirements. So again, I actually don't think, I don't think we are uh, as a direct competitor as, as, as a lot of people think. I think we're, we're serving the needs of different segments of customers who prioritize different capabilities. Um, and I think for, for them, they're really still a more consumer-oriented company because their mother company is a consumer-oriented company, right? We, we allow uh, consumers to use it, but we also are creating products that allow businesses, governments, you know, uh, hospitals, schools to also use it and to use it uh, with a you know, clear conscience and a, uh, and a sense of safety. Right. And in fact, we also allow a lot more flexibility in, in their ability to, to adapt the product to their needs. Whereas you know, a lot of the things are locked, you, know, you can't even access the camera on the, the, uh, the, the Oculus products. Right? Whereas we allow essentially full access to almost every part of our, of our device and API. Right? So, so actually, um, in fact, we're also enabling, like in, in China, there are probably about uh, a dozen or so uh, standalone vendors. And 80% of them uh, use our SDK, use our store, uh, and we even supplied uh, one of our, our biggest competitors or you know kind of partners with our controller to give to them the controller so they don't have to develop it, so that they can sell more product. So so we we don't see and and we do it in a way not because we think oh you know. Uh, we're going to make a lot of money on this controller. No, we actually give it to them just a little bit above cost. But we want to enable, we want to enable this industry to, to grow, right? We want to be able to allow users' choice of what they want to buy. You know, we're we're never going to be the low cost leader, right? That that is not how we position ourselves. We because we do all of the original development, we do the original research. We have to, you know, create the, the ecosystem. We had to bring in all these content vendors and then, you know, support them in creating the best in class content. It's not cheap, and we don't have a cash cow business where we're, you know, raking in ad revenues. Right? All of this has to come from product sales and, and software sales. So, so we charge a fair price for a quality product. Um, so it's it's a it's a different it's a different business model, and I think people people would choose the model that fits them best. But I don't really see us, you know, taking customers from each other at all. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I think I think Justin Abel has a lot of questions. I think I think it has to do mostly with. Uh, wow, he does have a lot of questions. <laughs> and I think it's because he owns a VR arcade, and uh, he feels like uh, maybe. HTC is probably not supporting VR arcades, and like I think he wants to know more about it. Like, well, I, I, I think we, we actually do support VR arcades. If you look at uh, arcades, they a lot of them really use our devices because they're so freaking durable. I mean, they they can get dropped from six feet, ten feet, and they don't break, right? And and the wires are thick. You know, they 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 last. They're like the tanks, you know. So so from a from a um, from a, a LBE perspective, um, we we actually feel like that's one of our key markets. I know in, in China, about ten percent of our units go to LBEs, so it's a significant portion of our business. Right? And we have a lot of accessories partners, you know, the the, the VR mask and the, the various uh, strap connectors and 
you know, the, the rebuffs of the world, you know, they're, they're all working with us, the haptic best, you know, we invested in the B haptics who, who makes the haptics best for a lot of these LBEs, right? So, so you know, we, we actually do support them. And, uh, but I think that the issue right now is that um, LBEs in the near term are having a tough time because of COVID, right? Because people can't go outside and they don't want to gather. They don't want to put their head into somebody else's headset that was just in there five minutes ago. Right. So it's going to take a little bit of time for people to to get over that fear. Right. But, you know, with with the vaccine coming uh, and being distributed, I, I think that's going to to help. I think with when, when you know, people being cooped up for a year, uh, it, it, they want to get out. Right. So, you know, China's if you look at China, I think, again, even in this point, China is a it's kind of like the, the, the canary in the mind chat that tells you early what's going to happen, because um, it had COVID, and within two months, it, it kind of controlled everything, and we went back to normal. I was back into the office in in, uh, in April last year, and our team has been in the office every day since April of last year, right? Our U.S. staff, our European team has not seen each other in over a year, right? So that's the difference. And so, you know, just like China got back to the normal, you know, their their box office, uh, they just had a, a new movie released last weekend. And I think it was it was kind of back to 2018, 19 levels in terms of opening day sales. Oh, wow. You know, people people want to people want to gather, right? People wanted to go back to the real life, real world or the, the past that they had. They just you know, haven't been given a chance because the government, you know, kind of regulation has said, okay, it can only be 50% capacity or 60% capacity or 10% capacity, right? So um, now that things are, are being more more open, uh, I think the world will go back and the world will will accept LBEs. And, and I think LBEs will play a very important role. I remember we did a survey, we do a survey every six months and 60% of the surveyed users had their first experience with VR in an LBE in China. So, uh, and then I think it was like 30% was at a friend's house, right? So, so- Well, Tessu people... says he does love your devices. So I guess, I guess you are right about that. I think maybe he, right. what, he's, <laughs> what he's trying to say is, I think that uh, I read some of his comments about is, I think he's waiting for the new device, which is, uh, uh, which is coming soon, and I think that's kind of what he was saying. Is like, please release that soon. Yeah, yes, of course. Look, you know, we we will we will always try to release our products as soon as possible because you know we know our customers want things, but I think we also want to make sure that whatever we release, that that's we've good. tested that we've tested it properly, that it works, that that you know we've thought of all the issues and we we've, we've got sufficient content on it and it's been ported well and you know and then it doesn't create issues for existing customers and there's a good migration path and all that takes time right? but um but when we do release it uh we, we we i expect that this this new set of products that are coming this year will receive the same level of welcome that we had in our first generation back in 2016. so so i think um i, I look forward to hearing the feedback from justin and, and you know other folks in the industry because i i think We've created a product uh, of products that uh, that will meet your needs. Awesome. All right. I think I think we, we are going to wrap this up now, Alvin. Uh, thank you for your time, and uh, thank you for everybody that participated. I think the timing is a little bit off because that's why I think uh, you you didn't get as many questions as generally you get because uh, most of the you know Europe is sleeping and Asia is sleeping. Uh, I mean, just waking up. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, East Coast is sleeping, so you know I'm I'm in I'm in uh, Macedonia right now, and it's uh, it's 3 a.m. Um, oh wow, jeez, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're, you're uh, sorry to, to keep you up, man. No, 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 it's all good. I'm I'm excited. I was really excited when you said yes, and you know I'm like I said, I'm a big fan of VR, and I do hope uh, that HTC uh, you know grows really uh, really big and. Uh, you know, you, you, you are kind of on, on the top of it and, um, you know, hopefully give very strong competition to, uh, to the existing competitors and, and build a very, very beautiful ecosystem that we need. Um, so, you know, so I'm very excited for what you and your company does in the next five, six years. 
Well, yeah, thank, thanks for organizing. And, and uh, you know, I, I, uh, I'm always happy that to, to talk to our, our community and really uh, hear what people have to say. So I'm actually, I'm actually really glad that you are allowing people to, to ask questions directly because um, then I can hear directly from them of what, what they're concerned about. And we will uh, take, that, take those concerns and, and bring it back to our development team for, for kind of future revisions. So, uh, but thanks again and, and thanks for staying up. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we'll, maybe we'll do this again in a year or two and uh, tell me well, how we you- We can uh, release the new product in this way. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, we can we can work out something else. So so let me know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> talk to your people, talk to my people. We'll work something out. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, take care, dude. I'm I'm gonna like, right. put you out there, but just stay there for like two minutes, and I'll I'll, I'll kind of just. Um, okay. All right. No worries. No worries. All right. And thanks, and thanks everybody for, for joining and thanks for all your questions. By the way, I I really appreciate you uh, you know giving me that direct feedback. Awesome. All right. All right. Um, well, I hope uh, you all enjoyed um, the conversation. Alvin was very gracious with his time. Most of the questions that, uh, you know, um, you guys asked. So, um, yeah, I think uh, this is the fifth one and we are kind of done. Uh, I'm going to not be having a live session next week, uh, mostly because I'm trying to combine all the learnings that I've had for the first five weeks to create a more uh, seamless, non-buggy process, because right now it's a little buggy and you know I have to, have to work around a lot of things. Um, so that's something that I wanna do and I wanna spend some time to get it done. And then I'm gonna be back uh, either the week after that uh, with some new guests that I've already lined up. So uh, thank you again. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to send me a message. Uh, and yeah, and if you're interested in virtual tours, uh, check out teleportme.com. Um, yeah, that's it. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.